Hi, my name's Tom with some more ATPL tips. This is the third video in a series that I'm calling GNAV Basics. Really, it's designed as a kind of entryway into the world of GNAV. GNAV can get quite complicated, and I'm trying to take a look at the real fundamental uh, parts of the course. So video one was a real brief introduction, or hopefully not an introduction, more of a refresher about latitude and longitude and how to use the DMS button on your calculator. Video two was the departure formula, um, explaining why we use cosine within that formula and, and just taking the component parts of that formula uh, and looking at it. Uh, this video three is rum lines and great circles. We'll take a brief look at those uh, in order to be able to get into video four to look at convergency and conversion angle and uh, answer some exam questions about those. Okay, let's go. Let's start with a really, really straightforward point, and that is the shortest distance between any two points is a straight line. Hopefully that's not too mind-blowing for you, and it sounds simple enough, and on a two-dimensional object, well, that kind of makes sense. Where it gets slightly more tricky is when we start to think about the shortest distance between points on a three-dimensional object, that is the Earth. The shortest distance between two points on the Earth's surface forms part of what is known as a great circle. And a great circle is any circle who shares its centre with the centre of the Earth and whose radius is exactly the same as that of the Earth. Remember, we assume that the Earth is a perfect sphere, even though in reality it isn't. But for the sake of uh, the maths in these exam questions, it is. Let me try to illustrate a great circle for you. Here's a globe and two points that we want to find the shortest distance between. We can draw on the vertical axis of the Earth. We can also, using the equator that's drawn on the globe, we can continue that to form the plane of the equator and put a mark for where the centre of the Earth would be. Now, as I said before, the shortest distance between these two points will form part of what is known as a great circle. So let's draw what would be the great circle that these two points sit on. Notice the way that this circle intercepts the plane of the equator. What that's giving us is the shortest distance between these two points whilst also forming a great circle whose radius is the same as that of the Earth. Now if I get rid of uh, the whole of that great circle and just leave the root, you can see that that is the shortest distance between our two points. And we can do this for any two points on the Earth's surface. Let's pick on New York and Rome. They're at similar latitudes and I'll show you what happens. Here's the great circle connecting New York and Rome. Notice that it's tilted away from us because of the perspective that we're viewing the globe at, but its center is still coincidental with the center of the Earth. What I want you to notice here is the way that the track of the great circle varies, especially over the North Atlantic. If we were to leave New York, notice we'd be flying a more or less northeasterly heading. Uh, becoming more easterly as we get over the North Atlantic, then as we approach Europe, the flight would turn more southeasterly, effectively being on a southeasterly track by the time the aircraft reaches uh, Rome. By contrast, let me draw the run line track onto this globe. Now, the run line track is a track that intersects every line of longitude at the same angle. Let's assume for a minute that Rome is directly east of New York. A run line track between New York and Rome would see an aircraft basically flying a heading of 090 for the entire route. The track wouldn't change. So run lines have a constant track, great circles have a constantly changing track. Here's a contrast between the great circle track and the run line tracks connecting New York and Dubai. The run line track on this Mercator projection appears as a straight line. Notice how it intercepts all the lines of longitude at the same angle. You'll remember if you saw video one that there are some particular issues with this type of projection. 
don't worry about that for the moment. Notice how they intercept, the run line track intercepts the lines of longitude at the same angle. But now if I add the great circle route, look at how arched the track is, especially compared to the run line track. But remember, the great circle route is actually the shorter distance. But the great circle track is actually pretty impractical to fly. The track constantly changes. So in reality, what's flown is a kind of hybrid mix of the two. Here are a few examples of different run line tracks. Note that they all cross the lines of longitude at the same angle. For a really extreme example of the difference between great circle tracks and run line tracks, take a look at this top-down view of the Earth. Let's say we wanted to fly from this point in China in the east to this point in the US on the west. They both happen to be at the same latitude, isn't that a coincidence, and they're on opposite sides of the globe from each other. Well, the Great Circle route would see the aircraft depart that location in China and basically fly north, following the 090 degree east meridian all the way to the North Pole, cross the North Pole, then travel directly south on the 090 west meridian. This would be the shortest route between these two points. However, the Rumline track would see the aircraft leave this location in China, fly a heading of 270 west, all the way around the outside of the Earth until it reached its location in North America. Here the run line track is really noticeably longer. And as you've already noticed, run lines and great circle tracks can appear differently on different types of chart projections. Now, this is GNAV basics. I'm not going to go into the details of different types of chart projection in this video. That will be another series in the future, but there are three chart projections that you're going to need to become familiar with, and they are Mercator, Lambert, and Polar. Mercator is probably the most familiar from school. Lambert is the projection used on most aeronautical charts, and Polar charts are used in, well, polar regions. Each of these charts has their own quirks and you will need to know the properties of each chart uh, in order to be able to answer GNAV exam questions. Notice how different the Great Circle and Rumline tracks appear across each of these charts. And really, that's it as an introduction to Great Circles and Rumlines you will need to know the difference between the two when it comes to dealing with convergency and conversion angle questions. So, to summarise, a run line crosses each line of longitude at a consistent angle. They're a longer distance than a great circle route, but they have a constant track. A great circle is a circle whose centre is shared with the centre of the Earth and whose radius is the same as the Earth's. Great circle tracks are the shortest possible distance between any two points on Earth, and they're a track of constantly changing headings. That's it. Time to move on to convergency and conversion angle, which gets slightly more complicated. If you found this video helpful at all, I'd love it if you'd give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you're not already. If I don't see you in the next video, then I'll see you another time with some more ACPL tips.